Female teacher. Female teacher. Ask her. She is she. Oh, I don't know. One my female teacher. Yeah. Female teacher. <laughs> okay, we just started. Good evening, everyone. It's exciting to see you guys on the part of this event. Welcome. Uh, welcome to this special Carnival Mumbai X PayPal X Dream Eleven event with uh, Chandni Nagar, who is the director and leads PayPal India. Uh, my name is Ashwin Koshi. You probably got lost in my mind, DMs and WhatsApp. Uh, I'm the president of the Mumbai Network. I graduated in 2019. And uh, we start these bigger events since 2020, almost one event every month. For school is like we are not going to school to come together, exchange ideas, and we open it up for everyone. So it's great that everyone's here tonight. Um, today's event is super special because not only is Kandi a uh, CMU alum, but the fintech space has been moving in India. We've heard a lot about domestic fintech space with the UBI trucks coming to domestic merchants, but now we have an organization that is powering Indian merchants to go global, how to accept the global market, accept payments in the global market, and that I think will be a game changer. So, you know. Let's keep it interactive. Then we 45 minutes of QA and then we open it up to the audience for a QA session. Uh, already in the session is Rachel Lopta. She is a CMU alum as well and uh, works at Dream Eleven. She was the vice president of Prax. Um, so thank you, Rachel. Thank you, Dream Eleven, for having us here. And uh, yeah, over to you. We get started. Uh, so, uh, so the very of the group of us to the background, and we will be doing Hello, everyone. I honor to be here. Thank you for coming in person. Um, so, I'm Chandi. I'm currently a uh, business for Big Bang And my background is in basically of a Bombay Hall. Born and raised here, um, an undergrad from Kalwal Shahani in Matra, and went to CIM for my master's at uh, the IIM, and graduated in 2006. And from there, my journey has been I've been back and forth US and India twice. So I interned at Google, which was an amazing experience during my CIM stint, and then went to Microsoft for a full time day for one of them. And then 2007, came back to India. I worked in a mid-sized education company, then worked for a telecom for two for a while, so three years. And uh, thanks to the I actually got a chance to even go back to the US. One of my friends was working at PayPal in California, and she forwarded my resume in there, so I got the interview with, uh, actually went back to the US and joined PayPal in the US uh, in uh, 2014. So I've been with PayPal for over nine plus years, so completed a decade <laughs> here. And um, started in a product role in the product launch manager after doing a like, startup in India. So they were looking for someone who knows how to build a brand and it's good execution and all fancy. So I was the launch manager for the PayPal app and helping them release features globally, working with the different regional managers. So that's where I started my PayPal journey. And from there, uh, I mean, I'm someone who likes to try something new every day. So for me to be in the same company for so long is kind of difficult for me to try this also. But if I such a place where you allow to be opportunities across fields, across geographies, so every time I've got a little, you know, been there and that, that role, they do have something else for me. And I'm very fortunate to have that sponsorship to build the company. 
and have been our customers for several years, and we've seen them through the whole COVID wave where there were lockdowns, so obviously, naturally, fashion was uh, impacted, but they've come back and they've been very resilient. And our team has partnered with them to uh, do our share of the with them and actually chose the PCK card for all international events for several of them. So that's the way the industry fashion, and the way it's not really fashion for affordable fashion, you know, and everything in between that exports are going to be really well. A second one would be travel. So in travel, uh, falls during COVID, but now it's coming back in a big way. And the, the, you know, everything from airlines to uh, online travel, they have to do a booking entrance, legal service providers. And even I've seen uh, young couples who are interested in traveling start curating itineraries and starting up, you know, travel businesses out of the area. Because a lot of people did that during the spring COVID because they oh, I come to COVID when there are international travelers coming in. And in India, so time for them to stay that has a different culture, and that you don't want to know where to go or what to stay. So you have to bring in entrepreneurs who are curating and customized personalized itineraries for travelers. And then leveraging PayPal to build trust with your buyer to make sure the money is safe. So that's another travel to bring industry that they can bring up again. Uh, third industry that we talk about the services in general, right? Like big part of exports is IT services, right? And we are the IT services part. So anything from website design, creative design, graphic design, you know, system integrators to build websites for US merchants, all of that is a huge, huge industry. And the fourth one is uh, which is kind of another action mode right now is FTX. So a lot of FTX uh, did really, really well during the pandemic. So we have the likes of uh, QMAX, Quiet Jr., and you know, five years and uh, you know, several others have had the Garden Smart Services to attract people on it. So maybe it's really amazing, but uh, maybe you are seeing as a trend, you know, like we did start up earlier um, on which. Will be useful for us to understand how uh, different geographies are, uh, how they vary from here. Yeah, so, see, um, a lot of it depends on the specific portions of the model. Like, if you're, if you're a B2C brand and you're building the US first, or if you're trying to attract B2C or you're trying to attract a back customers, so it really mostly depends on the business model and the specific export of But I can talk about consumers more, yeah. right? But, like, when they are paying. So, uh, if a consumer is coming from the US, they want to firstly be able to trust that their money is safe when they are entering their car details or not in the merchant. So they don't know the merchant, they may like the product, but they don't know when it's safe when the car deals. And that's where the trust factor comes in with the data, right? Because you know, uh, if I is a brand that will trust over the techniques. So we are in many ways lending our credibility to the small businesses who are in the So just seeing that logo gives them peace of mind that if something goes wrong, I am protected and can we provide fire protection for one in case. I don't think that any other founder does that. So in that sense, that if anything goes wrong with your fortune, you want to go to green talk, you want to blue talk, and you want to send it back. So we want to come. Oh, wow. And so that's the kind of protection. So I both on the seller side and the market side. And that goes a long way in, in you know, providing export comfortable. The second thing that consumers look for is being able to pay in their local currencies and to be able to pay with their preferred payment model. So, say I know I'm sitting in the US, you may want to pay with PayPal, but you may also want to pay with Venmo. Okay, so Venmo is very widely used in the US, like to split bills or to pay on Amazon or pay on Google for multiple things. So, you can also use that more as well. So, the products we offer, they call smart payment models, where, you know, based on the foreign or the company, we will display the right payment number to you. So, if you're from the US, you can see PayPal will also see where they move on the side. If you're coming from Europe, you might see Kaiser payments or from Germany, you might see Kaiser payment network if you're coming from the US. So, we have multiple what we call additional payment networks. That I was quite interested in because we want to keep the comfort that I'm going to pay payment number and we say that's the one I want to use for my cross border payment. And also, the third thing is flexibility in how they want to pay. So, for large ticket sizes, if you're buying a big travel in the primary, uh, LN ticket, for example, or a luxury fashion item, you may want to split the purchase. 
in my opinion, of this. So, kind of like why not be in the kind of product, change in the import of the product of the world. So, those are kind of things I would look for when they are talking about foreign international or from international countries. You mentioned that a lot. How many of you use that a lot? Are there any like, uh, new drawing similarities in this? From where the kind of way, and then who is very similar to UPR. So, what are the similarities? You know, the, I, I, when I use that over the US, it was so easy, right? I can spread my bills. You can be right next to the good. So, how does that go? Yeah, so, I mean, there are not so there is a slightly different goal. So, UPR basically is allowing you to go real time uh, money transfer from bank A to bank B. Right, it's enabling me to be so Venmo is also enabling me to be. But basically, they go Venmo and they go to the Venmo wallet where you can also hold Venmo balance and uh, you can link your bank account and link your card to Venmo. Like they can, you know, they can have a wallet or a system that you can use, and UPI is more like a technology that is used to enable the real time process. Any challenges of seeing for India and what's the payments? So, how? What is the next step of the immediate payments process? Fee for payments. Uh, I'll, I'll talk first about cross for the payments that I have been to pay. So, um, when Indian businesses are looking to go global, right, there are a lot of things they have to worry about. Firstly, just your product strategy. Where is the product market? Which foreign or which country will I get for the demand from? And then setting up your team, setting up the operations, setting up the payments and the logistics, then fulfilling the last mile correctly. Or you can find out all those different things. So payments is one part of it. And our job is payback to remove the friction out of payments. And the way we have written that is by doing a single integration, giving our merchants or any exporter in India access to the one main markets and access to 100 plus currencies. So Really removing the actor of going and feeding both partnerships. So, say you want a bunch of random files in the market, so you don't need to go and for social payment partnerships for those five countries. You can facilitate that for you through that one way that information. So, that's what we need to ask. And second is uh, businesses are worrying about fraud, right? especially in the case of fraud for the payment, it's very tricky. And if you're going high value purchases, how can you show? Processes are not intercepting the transaction and trying to set the money market. So that's where again a lot of AI and then coming and technology comes in, where we work with large amount of data sets. So like to give you a no um, indication of volume, right? They are the sumo 1.3 trillion dollars of payment volume and activity. So that's a lot of data we're talking about. So we know exactly buying patterns from different countries, different cities, what's the model behavior that Rishi Bhavid has. Today, if a transaction looks different, that Rishi is transacting from somewhere else, so you travel know where it's back in the city. So we are able to intercept these patterns in real time and make sure that the good actors are not the bad actors of the world. So fraud detection and management is a huge huge industry where we have to focus on our payment figures and that's something you don't want to do we do that to worry about right? that's not their expertise they really have to worry about the business in their product we worry about managing fraud and risk because at the heart of any payment system it's about compensating security with the needs and security largely comes from you know managing this so that's the big difference uh, do you think from India perspective? Sorry, from uh, India perspective. So, from India or abroad, I think the issue of payments to me is how do you make payments more secure, more convenient, and more flexible in general, right? All these things put together. Because it's, it's convenient and security are on the opposite side of the spectrum. You know, you think of the India OTP system, right? Every time you add the OTP, it is making the transaction more secure, but it's also adding an extra amount of friction. And we want to say that you've been using on OTP and it's been second and it's trusted. Mm -hmm. So uh, it got a lot better over time. But how do you want future of payments would be like how you actually have secure payments with our absolute fingers in a way that they become like payments in the background and you know that you say one click on zero payment. Like for example, like the payback Uber experience in the US, 
where you've taken a ride to do one and a half the and it you know, gets deducted and you don't have to do anything in your way. So, really moving towards that and uh, constantly innovating on conversion rates, improving conversion rates, because anyone can be clear that the agents and industry is concerned about you know, how you can test in class conversion from the time somebody says pay now and the time they don't keep pay, then you don't want to lose the customer at that stage. And how do you give them back when you have to have the customer engagement? And I would say first thing in terms of trends would be uh, interoperability of payments. So especially in uh, cross border over like uh, the whole globalization of UPI is an example of that was like how do you use your same payment technology that you use in your country and that can same technology can be used abroad and how do different payment networks work together seamlessly so that they create a wonderful experience for the buyer? Touch upon payment rates in the digital payment of commands, the digital revenue product. So it's really like they did a revolution for the media as well. Um, we spoke about um, the fashion industry, right? Uh, and we have checked the market. Any sort of example of any merchant you know, who's um, partnered with PayPal and been able to make uh, payments online? Yeah. Okay. Well, multiple of them, uh, one of them is actually a CMA alumni, so we can't even know. And this is not within the brand, then it is uh, PayPal also among other players. Um, and uh, that's one example when the consumers in terms of luxury fashion houses, uh, we cater to Kukoli and Pop Up Stop and other fashion homes. So uh, all these brands have been partnering with us for several years. And um, you know, they were working earlier on our little payment stack. So they upgraded to the new smart payment button that I talked about. And they introduced buy now pay later services with PayPal and buy now pay the messaging, which is helping them sell to international audiences. And our aim was to basically assign real time customer success managers to these key large accounts. So we do like quarterly reviews for use with them. And we help them just with insights about their brand and their competition and which corridor can be open next. So we constantly have the geo expansion plans, which is like consultation between the merchant and the PayPal team. So uh, Azra and Tonya are great examples of that. Fine. Thank you. Well, both elements in Indian lives, but I'm obviously interested in being in the project uh, and because of Goal of these brands is to take Indian luxury fashion to the world, and there is a great demand that we can do. Very interesting. Uh, what else to talk about? You know, your career uh, path and then for how you did a day back for many years as well. Just uh, any advice on uh, what you know how to, um, especially you know, the wind on. But on a day like that, and just in your door, your how usually that's a Yeah, I mean, this is a very accomplished group of But, uh, you know, my, my learning has been, you know, a teacher of doing dances before I went on, right, over the four times. So, my first job ever was in Google, which was an internship while I was in CMO. And, um, it was a little bit of a personal challenge where everybody was taking technical jobs, so I also took a software engineering internship. And uh, it was a great company, great benefits, but I was miserable for the three months because I wasn't meant to be in that company. And at the end of the three months, my boss told me, like, you know, you're the most hard working intern, but I'm not going to work for you over time, maybe. Because this is not for you, so please go try product or business or something else. And I think it's a great advice. I think early in your career, you can try to identify uh, what you like to work on. Like, you know, for a lot of people, it's difficult to know what you're asking. But I think for me, the process of elimination worked well. And luckily, I did it very early in my career. And then after that, I never took a technical job. I've always been on the business side of things. But multiple different jobs, in the business, whether it's product or marketing or operations or sales, I've done all of that. But I never went back to work for coding job because that was in need. So I think my one first advice is just try to figure out what you can do to do passionately or just something that you're curious about trying. And if something's not working, at least an early career, it's nice to take risks and try new things. And also following up with leader is important. You know, early to mid career, right? Because a lot of the leadership I have worked is 
I know it had a bit from the other day, you would look down to me. And you would realize that, but unfortunately, you are learning. Every time you have been dealing with this, you also learning this side. And you start having quality somehow in life. So, so important to have the right people that help us to follow over these to your mental health and the people. It's very important to have people who can constantly give you a check or give you good feedback for where you can do it. And then that's what I'm saying. You know, even I started as well as that of my first job. I had a very similar experience to me. Just did it and put me to do it. Moved out and I do business for an hour and a half of the day. Uh, if I could then ask the question. Yes. Uh, by the way, uh, question is uh, how are you different from a company called Team? So Bayu is actually a chunky part of the dress. Oh. Similar to Bayu Bay and Bayu and India, all Bayu's which are very strong in India domestically. And uh, we are partnering with them to enable international payments. So our strength is entirely in uh, cross-border payments. And that's the fact, that's why the problem is. I am Madhara Gandhi. I am a Thank you for your amazing talk. It was very inspiring. The question I have to you is PayPal help in the anonymized transaction data with the properties. And also, if you do in house analysis, do you sell that as well as you can do? Yeah, I don't think we would. That's something we can do. I'm very strict about the confidentiality of the data we have. So I'd be very surprised if you want to help me with that data. That's good to know. Hi, this is, hi, I'm uh, didn't go to see you, uh, but keep crashing. Um, uh, I was curious if you could shed more light on the uh, uh, PVP claim that the uh, state of the in India and what happened there. So we are not in the PVP business and like we just kind of fall back to the basics and doing what we are really good at. So we double down on exports as our business. And that's really the entire of the execution of what we have power. And because the you know the profitability, the maximum value added energy was stronger in that segment. This is where we add the maximum value to Indian merchants. So that's what we're doing. Right, but in uh, some of your strongest markets, you enter the PV first and then uh what you did. And so curious if you could check on like, the story behind like what happened in the beginning there. So we actually never had to be in India. It was always focused on the output. And we right now I'm present with a new ruling house for the markets to be added. Uh hi, my name is Roman Nodia. Uh I'm from the Sierra Colonel Business School. My question is about uh why now period. Uh can you tell me a little bit more about why now period and like what kind of Consumer would want to use it and how is it better to do PayPal? Yeah, of course. So we have over 20 million customers of my now data around the world. It's a service we started during COVID and it's taken off really well. And the reason why it works is consumers want flexibility and affordability in payments. Right? So for the, anything that's a high ticket size, you're buying an education program for three hundred three thousand dollars, or you're buying travel for three thousand dollars. It could be anything from that, right? So, in all these cases, what the NPR does is they allow you to split the transaction in multiple installments. So, the way how the NPR works is, say you're buying something for thousand dollars, or say nine hundred dollars, we will park the whole nine hundred dollars with the motion. At the right of check out, but you as a consumer pay our only three hundred. So we will pay in three. And then in uh, two weeks pass, you pay another three hundred, and then after another two weeks, you pay another three. So for you, it's split into three. For the merchant, they bought their full money up front. So pay our residents. So both consumer and merchant absolutely love this service. 
uh, and we are able to be successful at it because of really being able to minimize our mistakes, considering we know who we can trust with this project and you know. Because of our data and failures we have, we understand whether this can be offered to you or not. Thanks for the very session. I uh, am very well to be part of the London Business School and the next point, but in this case, we have a My question is actually more of a B2C sort of example. So I'm a real value user and I use it for transactions that you mentioned. But I was going to go to NNC and then I get stocks in US dollars. Now, when I transact with stocks, they normally go to a banking channel and the bank rate in US stock rate then it's very minimal. So I'm just trying to check is that a venture uh, where I can like, pay that, you know, as a medium to get the funds back in the country. I'm a B2C guy, but I'm just trying to. Yeah, I think we have to evaluate it case by case. So, you know, consider a high risk business also, right, in terms of uh, brokerage and space. So, we have to, uh, yeah, basically, we have our risk team and already have data. And for different business models, we run it by that. We have to push and we are right. Yeah, you can integrate it. All right. And one last point on that. Every quarter nowadays, most agencies like that get this stock option. It was, you know, the RS is that race. You know, with the growing population of individuals working in agencies, I'm just curious, in two months, let me, because I'm going to take a venture and understand that, and explore it as a you know, greater version of the agencies. Okay, so again, thanks, everybody. Nice. Hi, my name is Vibha. I'm a CMU undergrad of Tunas Country. So my question is on the competitive landscape um, because I, I run a small business and uh, we're looking to find a partner for our US and international clients. And I don't know exactly what the rate is, but when I move my team to evaluate data, I think I think we can't afford that. And then our next best default option becomes the HDFC, you know, online payment system. So the HDFC is like a working office on any kind of hour 10 minutes ago. Which leads to massive headache because the clients can't pay, let me say, any of the bank transfer. The any of the bank transfer takes forever, so much paperwork. So, we are in a conundrum. We need we need help, right? We need a solution. But somehow, it's like a paper piece is not affordable. So, can you give us the landscape in the market? Like, who are the players? What sort of key structures are there? And where does paper fall within this payment structure? And how do you sort of potentially make this a little bit more acceptable for smaller businesses? Yeah, it's a great question. So, we are too expensive, there's no denying that, but there's a reason for it because the conversion rates and the authorization rates to get the data will be like around 85 90% plus, and several other players will be covering at 50%. So, what do you pay for the conversion? Yeah, like payments fail if you don't have the right infrastructure for cross order payments, and when that happens, whatever your Making up in pricing, you're using an actual conversion, which is giving you a part of this whole terrible experience. So that's the reason why a lot of small and medium-sized businesses are willing to pay the price, despite it being more expensive. And the the bright side to it as long as your business grows and your volumes grow, we have different pricing structures where we start giving you better rates as you start giving more volume with us. So, I mean, if you can use the competition that there's a lot of different players in the market and they will be cheaper as well, but the conversion rates are something you have to look for. So, the growth strategy in India is it purely or I am not a big part of but if I can give you the US are looking at it, but right now it's all in my general marketing. Yeah, basically enabling any Indian business to receive money from a broker. Uh, Charlie, thank you. Amazing session. Uh, 
So I've been seeing a lot of new startups these days, new companies that are helping Indian companies sell work. They are doing the logistics, they're doing the stocking, and they're helping them fetch a higher price. So do you see PayPal becoming a marketplace for companies to sell their goods on, or is it only going to be a more uh, transaction part? Yeah, so we're looking to be a marketplace, but we are partnering with some of the enablers that you're talking about. So there are some platforms who are connected to hundreds of different brands, and they are, like you said, figuring out their logistics, figuring out their even regulating compliance needs by each country that they were launching, and they plug in FIFA as the payment you know. So that's how we're partnering with them. Yeah, because I think this is a new, very cool model where. One of my friends, manufacturers, uh, hookers, and he got, you know, through a company sold it in the US or Amazon company in their stocking, selling 40% more price for the same run. So, yeah, and I think that's a constant struggle when, for, for most brands that start out, the, they will start on a marketplace and then when they realize they figure out that one they crack the product on it, and then they start launching their own PMC site or app, and then they put it in. I want to know what these marketplaces are later. Okay. <laughs> uh, also, a question on the regulation landscape of India. When you're trying to navigate something as precarious as forex, how is that panned out for you? You know, working with the public because it's so you need to get five dollars into the country there and go where this five dollars from. So, how is that been for you? You're doing such a lot of volumes and with such a lot of players. Mention some KYC documentation, but does that suffice or does the government really go out with you guys? Because you are the UK user. I mean, that's the reason we have a separate government relation scheme, and their job really is to have enough advocacy consulting and making sure we are on the right side of the law. So, there's a lot of effort, and it's a full time job for somebody to make sure that it's part of the area. Hi, uh, I'm a I'm a wife of a student, Ivan. Um, I just had a question, like if you're deciding to be here, and if I want to make a payment, say to someone I have to pay in the US, was my partner or something, can you make a payment from my bank account in the US to the partner, stay in India, and then switch? Payment from India to the US, so you can split it out from India to the US, by from the bank account from the US to the partner. I have to check that. I don't exactly access three days, but if it's you also have the US bank account, I'm assuming. Sorry, you would also have the US bank account. So, in that case, you can link your US bank account for US PayPal account and for the refunds. There are no restrictions if you're deciding. I don't think so, but I can double check and get it. But I think Zell well allows it. I'm not too sure. I, I think you should. You also have an address. If you have a bank account, you have an address in the US. Yeah. 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 Family in India, and I've been here till my engineering. So, 
Maybe the first time I had to rent an apartment in Davis when I went after the which is uh, uh, yeah, you know, huge with learning students. It was very tough for me. The first year I was like, I don't know what I'm learning myself into. So my confidence was at my peak when I started. Also because the there's the peers who so smart, right? You know, you're sitting in a class with people who have been coding since age 10. And for the university, we should go out. Despite being a top all around here, I just felt so inadequate when I joined CIO. Simply because the peer group was so strong. But those two years just transformed me entirely. Like when I left CIO and I went to Microsoft for my first job, I was top of the world. I was like, if okay, I can pass CIO, I can do anything. I was very happy. So good memory to get in terms of just character building and life skill learning. Um, and I think you know, after the second day, what would I change? About, I think I would just want to have more fun. I regret mean, yeah, studying too much. All of us. Every program is challenging. Yeah, sure. Yeah. No, so interestingly, like my final semester, I just pivoted entirely on the side. I started going to negotiation classes from Tech Off. And if I had been well, then those two years, I think I would have been able to do it. Thank you. 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 Oh, no, <laughs> so, uh, you know, you worked in the US and India. You know, what's your advice for someone who's, you know, considering that uh, the differences in work culture, someone who's thinking what to be back? I know in the last few years, I've seen some certain people have contacted me and moved back. They took me from San Francisco and stayed there 30 years and moved to Hyderabad. Right? So, what are the factors, you know, what are the challenges? And you know, we have children here who would probably make the decision at some point. So, what is the experience like? Yeah, you can share more than me. I think you can share that for others on this. But really, for me, culture was the biggest thing. Like, uh, so for the first time I moved back to India, I got my own company, and uh, I went to one of the But basically, there was a system of HR writing inside and out of time and stuff. And I was like, I cannot do this. Like, I was actually started my career in the US. And I'm used to a certain amount of trust and fear. Right? And I've seen it in some companies here you know, where people will stay back late just to show their bosses that they're still in the office and stuff. Right? But for, for a large part, there are enough good companies also who care about timings, who would care about any of this micromanagement. So as long as you find the right people and the right culture, that, that is the first thing I would go for. It. I was very scared when I moved from PayPal versus PayPal India because I didn't want to work with the culture. Match up, but luckily it was identical. Like exactly the same functions followed the movie, so we never had that problem. I have a question on you know, you, you, your entire career is given technology companies, and you said you are an early realization that coding is not for you. But uh, I don't mind studying the. I'm not the end. You're not the Okay, so as you work through these tech companies, you know, when you're helming these organizations, how much coding knowledge is really essential? Do you ever feel a coding deficit? You're looking like, okay, thank God, I went to my and I went, you know, as a lot of people who did study computer science, like a lot of us are helping to make that switch over to tech companies. Is there is that something you feel like okay, you should go get that degree or not really? So I love technology in general. And but I don't love the programming and the coding aspect. But what the engineering degree did for me is just I'm able to talk to engineers if I need to. But it currently it's not part of my job. So if you're looking for a product manager role where you will be working with engineers and testers day in day out, then it helps to understand architecture to at least talk on a module with them. But if you're in a business school or tech company, like in sales or operations or customer success, I think just basic. First principles in the like you already don't have to know how to work. 
Thank you all so much. Really, one of being here and being here. Thank you. Yeah, let's have some more food, mingle. And then we go on. Okay. I don't know if all this is stadium. Everything is a sports better for Yes, the bed well, really well. Right? Of course, of course, I know I have some questions.